We're live. And with that thumbs up, we are live and back for the fifth installment of Cloud Talk. I'm here with uh, my partner in crime and friend, Brian Fanzo, iSocial Fans, who's been uh, in Las Vegas all week rocking the, uh, the streams and trying to out-tweet Watson, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. And we're honored uh, to bring in my friend, esteemed colleague, author of Social Media ROI, and also a new beloved speaker on things cloud and CMO, Olivier Blanchard. Uh, Olivier, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Um, so you and I have known each other through the uh, through the social streams and through the tech streams for a while. And so when I, I re reached out to you and I said, hey, we want somebody to come on air, uh, talk with us a little bit. Uh, after following this week's announcement about the, the Twitters and the IBM uh, marriage with their supercomputing uh, platform Watson and obviously you've been writing for some time about CMO and cloud so uh, thanks for joining us um, why don't you give us a, a just a quick little introduction to yourself and then Brian can take us on to the into the chat oh okay um, well for, for those who don't know me yet I'm, I'm the one of the troublemakers in the uh, the social business and marketing space um, I'm uh, the senior founding partner at an agency called KGB Global. Nothing to do with uh, the KGB. <laughs> no play on words there, right? We're not yeah, using no, 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 no. It's just, it's just initials, right? Um, and uh, so, so I'm, I'm really embedded in that, that weird kind of world between where digital agencies operate and marketing departments operate, and also how all of this connects to uh, the rest of the organization uh, in, in regards to sales, to business development, to community management, to customer life cycle. Uh, and that touches on research and measurement, and obviously ROI, uh, especially in, in social media, right? I'm the guy who wrote this thing. Um, so, um, so one of the cool things about, about being connected with, with IBM in the way that I am and with this announcement this week and, and with this show is that it's, it's all the same universe. It's kind of like the connective tissue with all of these, these things that are happening now that are completely changing the way that, uh, that, that marketing actually functions. Um, and, and at the same time, what my team and, and my clients are able to do together and, uh, and deliver for organizations at large. So um, this this Watson announcement to me is kind of like not really a catalyst, but a really clear sign uh, that there's a radical shift in, in the way that marketing functions or can function if we do it right in the next uh, next two generations, really. All right, I gotta, I gotta pitch in, and I want Brian to jump in, but we're getting things in the Twitters about your uh, sharp pointy objects behind you, your KGB <laughs> affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are wondering a little bit about you. So. Um, yeah. So I mean, uh, do you want me to address that? No, I just I collect um, cool stuff when I travel. So there's a boomerang from Australia, and there's there's other stuff from other parts of the world. So that's all it is. But at the same time, there's there's art, right? There's Dali back there. So it just, <laughs> there's a balance. Uh, that's good. And actually, it's you know I think this is we I'm glad that you have you on. I think this is the perfect kind of combination and guest that we have from. What I was learning, you know, I got back from uh, IBM Insight this week. I, I'm even representing a little Watson love uh, today, not because I didn't do laundry, and I promise my throat isn't sore from the No Doubt concert they had the other night. But um, the no it's doubt. an interesting, yeah, it's a it's a no yeah No Doubt that was fun. Um, but uh, it, it was an interesting thing, and you know, um, you know, thank you everybody that's joining on Twitter. We're kind of jumping in and. Uh, I was talking a lot at the event just about like we're doing a Google Plus Hangout, we're we're doing Twitter, uh, you know, the Twitter combination here, and I was surprised. You know, the theme of the event, uh, IBM Insight, was big data, but uh, I sat through multiple conversations and multiple sessions on social media. I sat I sat on ones on marketing. I sat on ones on cloud, and they you know they were calling it a system of insight is what they were calling it, where they were referring to. When you have cloud, you have big data, and then you have mobile and social with this engagement. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, you know, with your experience with social media ROI, the CMO background and CMOs linked to cloud, I think it's like the perfect link to kind of talk about what, uh, not only what IBM's doing, but what everybody's kind of shifting when it's like, you know, hey, these are all innovative, besides being buzzwords, they're all innovative 
um, solution. So for question one, we're going to jump in. And, you know, where, why CMO in the cloud? Like, what's the connection? What's the the link between the two? And kind of how do you think that's moving us forward? Well, I mean, it's 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 a it's a really good question actually. And and the catalyst behind uh, the CMO in the cloud series on my blog um, was this this giant chasm between the IT world, right, which is kind of like the tech world and, and all these this server, cloud, uh, software as a service discussion that, that big giants like IBM have, and the line of business application in, in the company. And so whether that's customer service or market research or product development, it doesn't really matter. Um, ultimately, these IT questions or these IT solutions that are being developed uh, by IBM and others are, are really not there for the IT department. They're there for the business at large. And there's a huge, huge miss op missed opportunity in the marketing world when it comes to technology, especially now and increasingly now, in that um, marketing tends to be really focused on creative and content and publishing and, and getting impressions uh, and still kind of using old models of, of market research when uh, all of this technology could absolutely, like, really lower cost for them, increase speed, increase efficiency. Uh, it's, it's, it's a toolkit that is so amazing that, that marketing departments um, would, be, would be really intelligent to use a lot more, and most of them still don't. And, and I think some of the reason why is that CMOs and marketing directors and just marketing professionals in general are not necessarily, A, invited... Uh, to this, this technology discussion by their IT departments. They don't know what's actually out there uh, and, and how partnering with their CTO or their CIO uh, or just you know whatever, their manager of, of, of IT if, if they're a smaller company. They don't understand that the partnership with them could completely change the way that they, they operate in a, in a really good way. And so this series kind of tries to connect the dots for marketing managers and CMOs and make this technology and IT world a lot more accessible. Uh, and, and I do it in a way that, that, that speaks to their language because there's definitely a language barrier between IT people and, and marketing people. So it's, uh, it's, it's really about connecting these two worlds in, in a way that, that makes sense for everybody. And, and that turns into really, really good outcomes for everyone. Uh, that's a great. Uh, I was just gonna say that's a it's a great response. I think what's been going on out there, right? And I think Brian, you can speak to this too. Is you were always on the tech side, and then you sort of got brought into a role where you're bringing tech and business together. And so we've entered this age now where it's you know, technology used to kind of be sold like almost for technology purposes, and now technology is actually being sold, really just to solve business problems. And this is the big caveat here is, you know, all these cloud platforms, it's not about a CIO or a CTO anymore. Those guys are enablers. So the marketers and whatnot, we, we need to figure out how to actually utilize this stuff, which is kind of going to get us, we're going to really dig into this as we kind of go further along, which sort of leads us to two. And Brian, I don't know if you have anything you want to add before we jump in. No, I, I mean, I, I think that's actually a really good point because, I mean, for me, I was tech and community, and I was trying to connect the two. And the, the marketing is, has, is that direct link, but I also think there's the, the element of if we're all not on the same page, like I think a lot of the theme that I was hearing this past week when I was, you know, even from small businesses, is like our cloud solutions failing, our social media ROI marketing teams failing, our our you know our mobile solutions are failing. But if we're linking them all together to to match the business solution, all of a sudden now we have all of these teams working in sync. And I think that's kind of where you know, my experience came in the in the background as well, is because I couldn't get things to work for my product teams because the community feedback wasn't coming through. So then I worked with marketing, and then marketing went to me and said, hey, I don't even have the right tools to get the stuff from the community. What technology can I use to do that? So I think that's that's perfect kind of leading us into uh, question two there, uh, Dan. Yeah, so you know, jumping into the question, I kind of posted a Q&A, I called it. I said, you know, should marketers be brought into the tech conversation? But really, the second question, and Olivia, I would like to get your thoughts, is do you think marketing, you know, need to be more savvy about IT? Are these marketers savvy enough about technology and, and, and leading a conversation in this area? Right. Well, you know, some are, obviously. Um, and you, 
you can kind of tell which ones they are because you, you hear about uh, some of their successes and, and case study and so some of the, some of their their tricks uh, and uh, and access to technology becomes kind of obvious if you know what to look for or if it's the at the core of the case study itself where they're showing you their dashboards and, and their their best practices um, but the vast majority of, of marketing professionals are still really far behind and and I think they're they're so busy um, doing what they do and and working in their marketing bubble I mean every, everything's pretty much siloed still um, that they don't necessarily think to look for solutions they don't necessarily know where to look for them and, and I just saw a report not too long ago um, that was gosh, I can't remember where it came from but um, it, it showed that two-thirds of marketing departments don't even use marketing analytics to measure their campaigns. Wow. And, uh, and that really, really blew my mind because I didn't think it was that bad. So on the one hand, you have only one one-third of marketing departments using marketing analytics. And and that could be any marketing analytics. I mean, that could be just Google analytics, right? So it could be the, the absolute most basic thing. So that tells me that within that one-third, it's it's probably unlikely than, that more than 25% actually use advanced uh, uh, marketing analytics, or at least use them in, in some way that's not just cursory. Um, so that's both a good thing and a bad thing. The, the bad thing is that we're we, as marketing professionals, CMOS have have fallen way behind the curve here, and and it's really. <laughs> It's really kind of scary and uh, and and not super impressive that, that we have, but at the same time, it's a good thing because the timing is really good to come back into the marketing world, to come back to CMOs and, and show them, look, you know, it's not just content, it's not just channels and Twitter and what are we going to do with social, it's all this other stuff, including Watson. Uh, there's there's cognitive computing, which is just mind-boggling, in its uh, in its potential. There's there's collaborative uh, aspects to this that, like you were saying, Brian, um, really connects marketing to the rest of the organization and connects marketing teams. And so when there's real live uh, or real time feedback from consumers from uh, from the press, if there's a, a crisis like a PR crisis brewing, or there's suddenly a uh, a number of questions arising in a particular part of the country about a product. You can immediately see that um, and uh, and react to it, and so I don't know. I, I think. I think right, so I got one for you. I mean, this was interesting to me because I and I and I want to say this in the way that I kind of uh, was looking at it. You know, I I've always believed that you know social media has been a struggle for marketing to get their hands on because they've they've kind of thrown it at PR and they've thrown it at you know. It's been one of those things that I know we've all kind of struggled with. And the cloud's no easy solution to enable us, but I think well, you know, if we if we utilize the cloud for social media, but I mean, data is scary. I think data. I mean, to me, at the conference, I would all these people are really passionate about what the data could do, and you were talking about Watson, and we'll kind of get into some of the examples that I saw. But I mean, what are your thoughts on like, are if if you had to pick which one they could be more successful with quicker is is data using data or utilizing the cloud? Which one is like the CMOs? friend uh, first in, in the situation today? Uh, well, actually, I mean, I don't see why it's, it's an either or. I think it's an and, uh, first of all. And, and it really it begins with what your primary need is or your primary hurdle that, that you're trying to do. So for, for marketing, you know, the, the cloud can come in, in, come in handy in so many ways. It's, it's really more a matter of capacity and, uh, and kind of a menu of what do you want to do today, right? Um, where data, really the, the purpose of data ultimately is not data. Data in and of itself is has very little value. It's a commodity. The real value of data lies in insights, right? You're, you're trying to answer a question or find out what the, the right question is. And if, if you have a means of collecting the data properly in the right places and, and analyzing it properly, uh, then, then you have an advantage in the sense that you're going to be able to uh, aim, aim your focus in the right direction and make the right decisions faster and better. So, so they're, they're completely separate pieces of the same puzzle. And, uh, and I mean, for me, being in, in a little bit in the analysis and, and the problem-solving business, 
I would tend to go with the data and the insights first. But for a lot of marketing professionals, the cloud might be actually more important, especially if they're trying to build tools or build campaigns uh, and, and basically build an ecosystem, an IT or, or a technical ecosystem that will support what they're trying to accomplish. If that makes and we, sense. We, yeah, we use the term cloud enabled a lot because basically any of those directions really, cloud just enables that. And the, you know, the more agile you're trying to make your business, uh, you know, I talk about flexible consumption, which will come up at some point, but cloud really allows businesses small and large to consume various amounts of cloud and technology based on what their business needs are and on demand. So so I want to jump into this because we, we've sort of been beating around the bush a little bit with this Watson. And so yesterday, for those of you out there that really didn't hear about this, so Twitter, which is obviously hopefully everybody on this on this chat knows who, who they are, um, the big social network, 140 character network, and IBM, which maybe some of you would have heard of, right? <laughs> Only one of the largest companies in the world. Uh, kind of got married yesterday in some capacity of taking their IBM Watson, which is their super cognitive computing project, and Twitter, which is the 140 character unstructured data mine. Um, and, and they're basically building a platform that is cloud ready where developers can build applications that can basically grab further insights from Twitter than ever before, right? So, you know, Olivier, right, if we were to say, hey, what's one of the biggest problems for brands in Twitter, it's what? Oh really? Do we want to go there? Do, just, how much give me, do give me a hundred forty word, a hundred forty character answer. One hundred forty character answer. That doesn't exist for me. Um, so no, I, I think the, the biggest, the biggest problem with with Twitter uh, for for marketers is is actually still to this day not knowing what to do with it. I know it sounds crazy, but um, there is there. Would you it, say they don't know what to do with it or how to measure it? I think it's a little bit of both, right? Well, the measurement is the measurement is one thing. The measurement kind of takes care of itself. I think it's it's becoming easier. I mean, Twitter came out with tools, and and so it's they're measuring impact on Twitter. The problem is they a lot of marketers don't know what to measure really, and and what what they should measure. So they're measuring what they can, which is what's being offered. So if if a tool measures X, Y, and Z, they're going to measure Y, X, Y, and Z, and they're going to find a way to insert that into their their value to the organization or campaign. Right. It, it isn't necessarily what they should be measuring or what they should be connecting that measurement to in terms of outcomes, in terms of objectives, right? Um, so that, that's a whole different topic. But, but in terms of, of using Twitter properly outside of the, the measurement and analysis piece is I still see a lot of companies just basically pushing content out, this whole notion that content is king. Um, Content is only king in certain con uh, in, in certain contexts, and especially if your business is content, right? So, if if content is just kind of a means to an end, then content is not king. So, if if all you're doing all day long is pushing tweets or linking to content every two hours uh, and and not doing anything else with Twitter, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot, and you don't understand how to really use the platform. Right. So that's I think we have to start with what is the value of the platform? What what could, what are all of the things that we could be doing as marketers on this platform, aside from just um, you know measuring numbers that show up on a screen and pushing content on it? What are the other things we could do? And and it goes back to engagement, community management, uh, driving sales, driving perceptions, uh, educating the an audience, uh, getting feedback from an audience. I, I think. One of the biggest, um, one of the biggest errors made by by a lot of companies in the last few years, and, and still to this day, is not using Twitter as the connective tissue between customer service and marketing and PR. Bam. Okay, so I mean, that, that, I, mean I think it's, right. I think that's spot on. But I, so actually, I got, I got a really good one from um, Brian uh, Marketing Hits on Twitter. He said, you know, we've been talking. You know, there's all this debate. We've had this on the show already, and this is only episode five. On you know, is it a CDO? Is it a chief? actually? I was in at a session yesterday um, at IBM Insight, and it, it, the theme was chief digital officer. And uh, I think there was about 15 people in there that raised their hand when they asked, "Who in here is a chief?" Uh, or there was the theme was chief data officer, and 15 people raised their hand that they were chief digital officers in that room. And he actually just asked the question, "Really, is it a chief insight officer?" You know, it's like that's an interesting. Concept because as you're explaining what this connective tissue is, you know the data seem to be the most popular conversation, and I, I mean I would have not expected to go to a big data conference 
and hear people talking about marketing as much as I did. And I think that's a trend that might, yeah. you know, might lead. You know, and with Twitter teaming with IBM and they're announcing it at a big data conference, that seemed to me like a major, you know, switch in our thinking of if we're if data is social data is important, that social data can be leveraged, you know, for the CMO, the CIO, the business itself. I mean. How do how how do you think about that as like a as as a game changer in just data as a whole linking the CMO to the rest of the organization? Right. Well, no, that's 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 a really really good question. Um, so you know it's it's weird. Let me let me take a step back from this. And I've been to a couple of IBM events recently, and I hear a lot about uh, because it's a lot of IT folks too. I hear a lot about hybridized IT. Right, and the notion of that is that you have this hybrid version of IT where it's not all cloud. And it's all not legacy servers and, and hardware. It's it's a mix of both, which is uh, for for IBM and, and their partners kind of a selling point of you can you know you can keep your old stuff and get into the cloud too, and it's totally fine. You don't have to throw away your investment. So that's nice. But um, at the same time, when I look at this, there's a similar model in terms of line of business and collaboration. And so when, when you bring up something like should it be a, a, a CD or like a chief data officer or chief insights officer or some other version of that weird thing, what I'm hearing is the exact same thing. It's the hybridization of, of traditional roles inside an organization. And I think that today, or at least moving forward, a CMO can't just be about marketing. Uh, he has to. It has to become a hybrid role, where you you also understand technology and how technology fits into your world. You also understand how data fits into your world, and you also understand how insights fit into your world. So you have to be a little bit more hybridized in your approach, of of what it's, what it really is that you do as a CMO. At the same time, the chief data officer or the chief insights officer needs to be both. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you call that that role, as long as as both of those elements are connected, and as long as that that chief data or chief insights officer is able to connect the dots between the data and the insights, and the line of business that he or she happens to be working with at that particular moment, whether it's customer service or product development or uh, or marketing. So, so, so if, yeah. Oh no! I was just going to intervene because I, I want to get to the fourth question. And, and Olivia, we could do a three hour with you. Yeah, See, I, I, I got a public announcement. I asked him to write me a seven hundred fifty word article one time, and he came back with three thousand words. Olivia's got a lot of great ideas. <laughs> we just got to figure out how to fit them into the fit them into the parameters here. But you know, one of the things I was trying to lead you down the road of, and I know you know this is, and you mentioned this when it became when you said social customer service, is that really what brands and the insights they could get from Twitter is the conversations that are being had that maybe aren't even directly or implicitly mentioning a brand or that aren't directly or implicitly um, speaking of a certain exact sales opportunity, right? What it really comes down to is people are talking back and forth and it's that semantic insights that are going on on, on Twitter where you and I are having a conversation back and forth and which brands could benefit, right? through what we're talking about, why we're talking about it, how we're talking about it, and could some sort of computing system that could pull those insights really change the game for businesses big and small. And so kind of trying to lead you down that path, which I want to jump into the fourth chain now because we kind of hit on it, but this is what big data can do for small business. Big businesses have sort of at least been able to start with big data. Small businesses are like, what are you talking about? So. What impact do you think this Watson thing is going to have on, on small business? Uh, and it, as a whole, big data, what do you think big data could do for small businesses going forward? Okay, so let me try to frame this without losing my thread. Um, <laughs> this is going to be kind of complicated. But actually, it's really simple. But there's a lot of moving parts. So on the one hand, you know, we talk about big data, and it's, it's kind of big data has become a little bit of a buzzword. Um, and, and you've brought up in the last couple of days this notion of, of little data. Uh, which is so it's basically macro data and micro data, which comes basically it's if you really look at it from from a few feet away it's it's a funnel you you start with a lot of big data and then you narrow it down to small data or you take very you look for very small isolated pockets of micro data that are going to yield big insights right so right. it's kind of like this this back and forth funnel and now you can do both um, but we we went a few years ago from um, 
what were people talking about last month, right? In, in traditional marketing, like market research uh, uh, projects, where, where you, you survey people, you do a study, and then you report on it a few days, a few weeks, and in a lot of cases, a few months later. So it was what were people talking about very recently? to a point uh, in the last few years where we could look at what are people talking about right now. Right. And, and Watson and, uh, and cognitive computing with, with more and more increasingly reliable predictive analysis, which hasn't always been all that reliable in the past, gets us from what were people talking about an hour ago to what are they talking about right now to what will they be talking about in five minutes and in an hour and in a week. And uh, and it's so it, it removes a lot of the manual bits and pieces of it, a lot of the guesswork, where uh, you're trying to figure out what you want to do, what you want to say, what people are talking about, what what the angle of your next campaign or, or activity needs to be, to uh, to a, a set of of potential and likely or likeliest uh, topics and avenues and strategies, and so what big data does is it opens the door to big analysis. And big predictive analysis, um, which is going to allow marketing departments and CMOs, since that's what, really what, what we're talking about, um, to do better planning, uh, to allocate their budgets and, and their funding in, in better ways, and really make better decisions about where they want to spend their time and their money, uh, what channels, what, what keywords, what topics, what projects. Uh, with with a pretty reliable uh, set of parameters that that'll help guide them and and sell it to their uh, to the, the people with the first strings and I think that's really exciting because it takes a lot of the, the the trial and error out of out of the model it saves a lot of time so instead of doing kind of a, a scattershot approach to marketing and just spend a lot of money throwing marketing dollars all over the place and hoping that it sticks in certain places. You're, you're now going to be able to increasingly figure out where to spend that stuff to get the most bang for your buck um, without all of that extra waste. No, that's, that's a great it's a great answer. Did we throw up four for the Twitters? Um, yeah, just... I'll post it again. But I, I mean, so this is interesting because I, you know, when I was sitting there, lot this actually I was asking people yesterday after the Twitter announcement because you know day one was the Apple announcement with Apple partnering with IBM. Um, and you know the theme of the opening keynote of the IBM event was um, all about you know these three sections: big data, cloud, and they called it engagement. And I was impressed that they called it engagement. But like after talking to these people about, hey, what does this mean about Twitter data? Like all of a sudden, you know, it was funny. We were we were trying. I was actually working with with one of the guys from Twitter that was sitting with me, uh, Tom, and we were trying to figure out if we could actually figure out a way to see how many people in the IBM audience were signing up for Twitter for a Twitter account that they never had one because all of a sudden they're they're a partner with them as a company. But um, the engagement element seems to me like, you know, uh, I think Simon had put it on Twitter, you know, marketing getting personal, getting connected with the community. Then you have the cloud and technology getting engaged with the community because they're, they're with the data. I think that engagement seems to be a, a, a new concept in the big data role world, and it's something that we've been trying to get uh, across in marketing for a while, don't you think? Well, you know, marketing kind of fell back from, we had this, this little window of opportunity, which I think can open again, uh, where everything was about social media all of a sudden, and what do we do here, and it's all about conversations and, and engagement, and earned media versus paid media. And, and we could have an entire show on what happened there, but essentially earned media has, for the time being, kind of shifted back to the old habits of marketing, advertising, and PR, it's it's all kind of become paid media again, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but with that came a few bad habits, which is kind of like this lazy let's push content out down these channels and down people's throats um, because that's that's what worked ten years ago and that's what works now and that's how we make money. So that's that's kind of a separate issue that has nothing to do with big data, with technology, and with best best practices. It's just kind of you know a, a little bit of a step back. Because marketing uh, and the marketing world just you know went back into old habits, but there's one thing I mentioned or I forgot to mention with in regards to question four, and the importance of the cloud, and and it's that when when I talk about all this you know knowing what's going to happen next and this, this kind of you know big analysis and, and predictive analysis in Watson, it sounds really expensive, 
And it sounds like the kind of stuff that initially is only going to be in the realm of, in, uh, of, of really big companies, basically enterprise-style businesses. So the Nikes and the Apples and the big agencies. And so it, it seems so cool that, and, and expensive that it seems out of reach for small and medium-sized businesses. And where you asked me about the value of the cloud earlier, I, I totally forgot to mention this, but the cloud actually makes it um, uh, accessible <laughs> and cheap because you don't have to invest in all this hardware. You don't have to have a massive IT department and all this computing power and, and buy software licenses for, for years and years and years. You can, do, you can do software as a service. You can basically do computing on demand. And the cloud allows a very small company and, and really most startups that grow into these, these huge companies uh, with, with very high valuations uh, tend to start out with cloud services. And, and so the cloud really kind of, I don't want to use the word democratizes because it's also a buzzword. But, but the cloud makes it um, cost-effective and really affordable for a company of any size uh, to, uh, to be able to do things that, until now, only very large companies with huge budgets were, were able to do. So it levels the playing field for everybody. And, uh, sure. and it's important for people to know that, because otherwise they, they'll think, like, yeah, it's great, but it doesn't help me. Well, if, if they look into it, actually, it can help them. So before we get into question five, because I know Dan had that post on Little Data yesterday, and I actually brought that up as I was talking to a couple of small businesses late afternoon yesterday on just the whole idea of data. And one of the themes that I heard, and I, I was surprised, is they kept using the term fast data. And I think that might have been because of IBM Watson. And granted, I think data now calculation will be um, kind of definitely thrown into the loop because you know one of the things I was surprised is so many people were excited about data because it wasn't conceptual. They're like, no, I mean it wasn't you know theory. They're it's like, no, I'm using data today. And one of the examples that I use, you know, uh, my family owned an ice cream store growing up in uh, uh, through high school and early days in college. And one of the things that you know we had a sensor on our door that you know anytime someone went in the door, it dinged to let you know to come out of the back. And yeah. for me, you know, as someone that had to staff up and build inventory, I would have loved if I had cloud back in 1999. For me, cloud as a small business owner. Because I would love to know, based on the traffic coming in and traffic patterns, but from that simple door sensor, what you know, what are my most common hours? Because I guarantee my mom was guessing that, oh, okay, between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. was our most popular time. But how do we not know they didn't come off the beach between 4 and 6 to come get ice cream? And it was usually something that we were we were guessing as, as a small business owner. And, and we didn't have a, a POS system that was cloud enabled, but it would have just taken one sensor, you know, it connected to a Wi-Fi device, and I would have had that data for me to make way more strategic decisions across multiple things. And I think that's when we think of small, like, I had, I really was stressing yesterday, and I, and I think a couple people were surprised, because I'm, I'm a tech geek. I'm like, take technology out of the big data discussion for marketers. Like, let's get rid of like getting overwhelmed by all technology. Cloud allows you to get that data in real time, fast time, and it doesn't matter if it's little or even bald data for on Daniel's side. Hey, 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 down boy. No, I mean the bottom line is right, how do we extract conversations? I mean, for the, the, the bottom line is the majority of the world's data is unstructured. The majority of the world's data is found in blog posts, on social media streams, and user generated content online. It's not found in spreadsheets and easily discernible content. Because if it was, really we'd solve that years ago. Companies, you know, Oracle databases years ago could could decipher that stuff. The problem yeah, my is worst now, class, my worst class in college was SQL database. I hated right. that class. So, Actually, I think that might have killed my computer science uh, dreams because of that so, so, class. But I mean, the bottom line is this: is like this conversation is data. Like, there's all kinds of extractable bits of data, and so you know, in the future, right, with cognitive type computing, right, you could take the semantics and the context and the actual content out of this conversation that's being had, recorded, and streamed online that doesn't have a written word on a page and grab it, put it into a file, and a brand could actually do something useful with this because it's publicly shared data, right? right? This is a publicly shared event. So, Olivia, I wrote a post about what I call little data, okay? Because yes. my whole thing is big data is, is overwhelming. Little data sounds like something I could, you know, take to lunch. And then the bottom line is I think in the future for CMOs, big and small, but in SMBs in general, little data, right, is – is how do you pull out those few bits? So for like the businesses out there that might be listening or that are going to watch this later and they say, how do I pull little bits out of this mass of social data and the content data and what do I do with it? So if someone asked you that question, you know, and, 
and you had a couple of minutes to answer that question, what would you tell them? I, I would go back to the, the question that 90% of the time um, I, I, I go back to, which is what are you trying to do? Or what, what problem are you trying to solve? So if, if you're trying to, I mean, the thing about big data is, is you have this massive funnel and you're able to just kind of bring it all in and, and process it very quickly, very efficiently, and look for patterns, look for uh, certain keywords. And so basically, big data to me in its, in its kind of most basic form is the word cloud or the keyword cloud, right? And then you can turn it into other things and start making pie charts and, and graphs and, and, and stuff like that and start kind of not just quantifying it but qualifying it. With little data, unless I, I understand it incorrectly or it's, uh, I understand it in a different way, uh, little data is really about micro-targeting. It's, uh, it's, it's looking for, for kind of the, the needle in the haystack. And uh, so I think that's really important, but you have to know what that needle is and so if you don't know that, then you need to go back to your thinking room and figure out what it is that, what that needle is or what those needles are or what they need to be. Um, the, the second piece of that, I think, is that with increasingly with cognitive computing, you may not necessarily have to come up with it yourself. You might ask a, a Watson application, um, essentially, what should I be looking for? Like, what, this is all my business. These are all my metrics. This is everything that I'm doing. Um, what, what should I focus on next? What should be my, net, my big five things for the next year or the next five years? And can you help me uh, not only figure out what they are, but <coughs> all this data uh, for answers, insights, uh, and, and, and other types of information? And uh, the cool thing about about Watson is that increasingly we're talking about not a lot of programming, not a lot about not a lot of, of really kind of complex technical stuff where you have to input questions in certain ways. It's actual natural language. Yes. So you can you can have a conversation with it like we're having right now and it will understand what the question is. Uh, and and go and look for that information and, and put together a report for you. And uh, that's, I mean, when we talk about game changers, again, kind of a buzzword, that is, that's not just a made-up game changer. That is a radical game changer, not just in computing, but in the way we think about strategy, in the way that we think about, uh, about business management, and, and in my case, campaign and, and you know, marketing management. It may even change the way we make friends. You know, no, and, uh, or even, no. I mean, like, the cognitive learning element. I mean, I, I sat through a demo that was that was a teacher in Nairobi that was getting cognitive learning data that we were, they were combining data from the, the CDC, the Twitter stream, and what they were doing is they were trying to figure out if there was a contaminated well in a certain town, it would notify a teacher live so that the kids that are from that same town could be either taken to the nurse's office or they would know that certain kids were not coming there. Yeah. And it was like, they showed us the UI and the teacher is doing this with, I mean, my wife's a teacher and it was it was a very simple algorithm that I mean she was clicking a couple icons she dragged him in and said you know these are where my kids are from and like to me that's mind blowing because it's like holy cow we just took took data and analytics which even when I was telling people that I was going to this conference especially in the social media world they're like oh it's one of your geek things Brian and now like coming out of it it's like no if you think of insight is you know now you're making strategic decisions quicker and it's real people talking you don't have to be an uber geek getting in there you know with code from all these different things, we're actually taking, I mean, I think the hardest part now is it's like, well, with, with this data, I think a couple of people put it on Twitter, it's like not only querying the right thing, but asking the right question. But I think that's been the problem really on across the board and everything we're doing. Because I think too often in cloud computing, you're not asking, do I need cloud computing? You're saying, I need cloud computing because everybody else says I need it. And then afterwards you go, why the hell did I do this? What am I, like, what's the, what's the end game here? I think that's an interesting the point. I love the idea that you're talking about. It's really different now because it's really conversation that is giving us data instead of, you know, a bunch of guys locked in a room drinking Mountain Dew. No offense, because I was one of those. <laughs> right. Well, you know, and another thing that you mentioned, Olivia, I think that needs to be extracted as a data point from this conversation is, it still goes back to having a brand that understands what they're looking for. You know, and I think that's really what little data has always meant to me. You know, and why I kind of came up with this is that there's only so many insights that KGB Global needs. You don't need the same insights as 
as Pepsi, and, you know, and I don't need the same insights as you. So what well, I'm saying is maybe was, maybe you're working for Pepsi, and we need to get those insights more. I was trying. I'm plugging. So Pepsi, heat KGB Global. Yeah, but the point go. is, is that um, you know, there's a lot of brands. You know, they're looking at big data collectively, and I think what little data really means to to me, and what I was trying to get from you, is that what does data mean to you? And that's really where it goes back to building a strategy because. You know, marketing as a whole, it's like, yeah, social, it's a platform. Yeah, data, it's a platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, what does it mean for your business? And then what tools and cloud and how that's going to enable you to leverage it? Because otherwise you're just – they are needles in a haystack, right? Well, maybe you know? that, that, that's going back to uh, to the, the point that Brian was making earlier about the, the, the chief data officer and chief insights officer. Most companies that I've worked with – uh, and some of them were pretty forward-thinking, did not have that role, period. They might have a data scientist or, or a data analyst <laughs> basically buried in a back office somewhere, constantly putting together like Excel files for them and doing stuff. Um, and they're usually brilliant, brilliant people who are totally not underutilized but not utilized properly. Um, but I think increasingly, especially especially with this, if, if realistically we can't really bridge the, the gap in terms of marketing professionals becoming much more savvy uh, in regards to technology, we need to have that, that kind of intermediate role in there, that, that person who's going to be able to understand data, understand the lines of business, understand insights, and be that translator for them. Uh, do that, that kind of go find me answers and go find me questions uh, role that that allows the marketing professionals, the CMO, and, and the entire organization under the CMO to do what they do best, um, but have this this partnership internally or externally with somebody who can who can go find that data for them, go find those insights, and translate them into something that uh, that's valuable in terms of advice, in terms of direction, uh, and in terms of strategy. So. so that's, so when you think of like, so I mean, social data, uh, I always kind of associate that being something under the marketing department. And then I think of uh, customer data being something that was customer service, so you're not sure if that's really under the marketing department or if that's under a, a different role. And now with this idea that data is going to be not only more readily available, uh, hopefully little or bigger, but the faster data coming back to us, how can the, this real-time data now that is actually making us be able to make strategic decisions real time. It's not something that we have to, you know, 30 days reverse engineer. But so when you think about, you know, how can the CMO not only utilize the social and customer data, but how can they maybe even use data to be the link to, to get the CIO to understand what they need? Because I think there's a, there's a little bit of a tie between the data element and then Cloud as well as uh, you know. Right. As, you know from the well, there's yeah, there there are two ways of, of solving that problem. So one is in new organizations, you know, you can you can look at a flatter model, uh, the kind of stuff that you see at Zappos and and kind of like the the new generation of companies that are being created where you don't have this these really deeply embedded silos that don't necessarily talk to each other or want to talk to each other or can even if they did want to, right? I mean, it's just it's an organization that starts out in the right way and scales in a way that, that promotes collaboration uh, with tools and, and best practices. And then you have kind of like the legacy models of these, these organizations that have been around for a very long time that have allowed these, uh, these ineffective silos to kind of take root. And with these companies, typically the culture is not going to allow you to realistically break down the silos and change. And change management with these companies is extremely difficult and, and kind of disappointing in, uh, in its speed. So Actually, it's, if, funny, it's funny you say the change real quick because one of the things I noticed that like, jumped out at me is I had asked a couple of people about being in this big data event. And you've been to IBM events. I know Daniel as well has been an influencer at IBM events. I wore jeans, but I'm, a, I'm one of the guys that like to feel like I, I'm a, I'm the I'm not afraid to set that up. There was a ton of jeans at the event. So I actually almost felt like between the jeans, the IBM teaming with Apple and IBM teaming with Twitter, that's change. And that big blue can change. Don't you think? I mean, that, that's like a sign that everyone is really going to have to embrace change because, I mean, big blue wasn't every single person presenting wearing a, a suit right. jacket and a tie. Well, yes and no. And so I'm, I'm going to go by the, the, the notion that, yes, some companies are going to change, and, and IBM definitely 
can be one of them or could be one of them or is one of them. Uh, but at the same time, you can have some organizations that don't. Or different silos or different portions of an organization are going to be more open to change than others. And so you're always going to run into friction uh, and resistance and, and inefficiencies. So if, if you go by the, the – so instead of trying to break down the silos and kind of reconstruct – uh, an organization which is like super difficult and 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 very time and, and energy consuming, the the next best thing is to leave the silos alone, but start building connective tissue between the silos and create processes and architecture uh, and models that essentially make the silos more efficient in terms of collaborating with each other, have better access. So you need a hub of information, of data, of insights. Uh, you need leadership at the top and, and kind of trickle-down leadership where everybody understands that, okay, we in order to survive and in order to thrive and keep being competitive and successful, um, even if we keep the silos, we have to collaborate better. And this is how we're going to do it. And all these, these politics that we have between us are going to have to stop. And if you, you can't be professional enough to make them stop, you can go find a job somewhere else. And uh, I know that sounds a little harsh, but there's there's probably a nicer, friendlier way of saying it, but, but the outcome is the same. So you have to have the vision and the understanding of where you want the, the company to go. Not necessarily rock the boat too much, but start building bridges and, right. and do it in a, in a way that's very efficient and that's valuable uh, to everyone in the organization because you're going to have people who are going to go, like, change is hard, change is a pain in my butt, uh, I don't have time for this, I have other things that to do. Um, but if you're able to bring change not for the sake of change, but change that brings value to every line of business and every employee, then uh, you'll get much faster adoption. So it, from, from my world, I, you know, the, the, I don't see silos as necessarily being a bad thing. Uh, I, I just see silos as needing to be very well connected with one another, and then everything works super well. So we just build bridges silo to silo, right? We build I, actually, I actually talked about that in a uh, social business post I wrote about one time because I said, you know, sometimes in large organizations you need successes in vacuums in order to get buy-in, right? You know, because you, you think about a company that has 100,000 employees, they should instantly be successful at social media, right? I mean, you should be able to share any piece of content, get it reshared 100,000 times, you should be first on Google, everything should work. But it never works. Why does that never work? Because you can't just be like, hi, I'm the CEO. We're going to be a social business now, and then everybody tomorrow starts tweeting. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. Same with any sort of technology adoption. It's very, very similar. So last two questions are questions that we kind of tend to ask all of our guests. We always have one that's a little more serious and one that's a little bit more fun. So I'll ask the serious one, then I'll let Brian, since he's the jeans-wearing fun guy, ask the fun mm -hmm. one. Serious one. So we've talked about CMOs. We've talked about CIOs. CDOs, CTOs, CSOs, CROs, CNO, and let's just go with no, no, Wait, what's, no, 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 CCCs. Okay, a lot of Cs. Yeah. What does the future look like? Like the CIO, CMO, CTO specifically, one position, collaborative positions, what's going to happen? Oh, wow, I don't know. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's the potential, right? Here. There's where things could go and should go if we were all smart and brilliant and, and understood what's, what's going on. Uh, and there's the reality, which is a lot messier, where even if we're smart, we might not have access to the right information at the right time, or we might be surrounded by people who have their own agendas. So the, the, the potential is, is super, super bright, and I've never been more uh, really enthusiastic and, and optimistic about where marketing and business could go. Uh, and, and that goes not just for like businesses, but also for, for consumers. I mean, we're, we're kind of in both worlds. Uh, I think it's, it's super genius, and we should have a show about Big Brother versus Big Mother in terms of mm, you know, like that. privacy, right? Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we have all this opportunity and, and all this just amazing stuff that we can do and we're just going to, it's, it's not going to be utilized. It's going to get squandered just like in, in almost 2015 you still have companies who have no idea what to do with Twitter um, and, and, don't, and, and two thirds of marketing departments don't use marketing analytics. There is, so I'm, I, that's my concern, that, that we're not getting through to the right people and that they're, they're not having access or eyes on or that the light's not coming on when we're showing them this stuff still. And, uh, and if we don't overcome this, this 
data and insights hurdle specific to, hey, look, this is your profession. This is what you can do now. These are all the tools here. Do something cool with them. If we don't overcome that, we'll be, we'll be really frustrated five years from now um, because Watson will only be used by five or ten percent of, uh, of the marketing world. And, and I think that would be a, a, a huge, huge shame. So, so can I, uh, you know, then make a new prediction that maybe what you're really saying is the real problem isn't figuring out the CIO, CTO, and CMO, but it's actually having a CEO <laughs> that yeah. builds a team that, you know, I like that. bottom up, top down, collaborates and culturally is willing to shift both with technology and, you know, behavior. Which Especially yep. if the CEO is the one that's, you know, driving his company to collaborate. We want open communication. We want to, you know, be faster, quicker as a business. You know, he probably should be the one that's getting his C-suite to be starting that trend, you know, uh, driving the business as an example. Yeah, if, if you have a leadership that's disconnected from, uh, from, from the world around them, if, whether it's, it's a, a cultural bubble or, or something else, some kind of other hurdle that they just, they're, they're, they're not interested in, uh, in technology, they're not interested in, in the kinds of things that their companies should do, and they're more interested in, in profits and playing golf. And I'm, I'm not judging, but I mean, everybody has their, their priorities, then they're probably going to be a, a little bit of a liability to their company. Um, whereas a, a, a CEO who's really hungry for, for knowledge, for, for better angles, for how can I make my company better right now? How can I surround myself with better people? How can I build better models? How can I best? How can I build a better company? If you have that kind of leadership, then I think you're going to be fine. Um, it's just you know leadership versus management, and then. Uh, you know, it, it all it all comes in different sizes and flavors, and uh, and some are definitely going to be better in, in this regard than others. Yeah. So I mean, so one of the things that I you know uh, our sponsors IBM and Avnet um, Solutions. One of the things that I you know people were asking me, they're like, oh hey, when you're you, know, I was actually on the cube there at uh, IBM Insight, and they were like, well, people are sponsoring this event. They're sponsoring us doing these cloud talks. These and they're like, there is part of that reason that they're sponsoring is the data. And I, you know, we're at a big data conference, so they asked a big data question. But I thought that was actually powerful because, you know, part of the reason these companies are struggling with social is they don't know who to engage, and they also also don't know how to, who's having the conversations. And by like, you know, events like we have, we have you know, 32 people watching live on the Google Plus Hangout, another hundred or so in Twitter for this hour talking about this topic. The data that not only social listening, I, I always feel like listening in when it comes to data and social is what people suck the most at because they're they're too busy trying to do all these things with it instead of listening to what that is actually coming back. I think the feedback, the conversations that we're having like this, IBM and Avnet, the fact that they're they're sponsoring us so that we can have these things to happen, that's a great sign because that means they understand the importance of like listening, allowing these kind of conversations to happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so, so, uh, so so one last comment, and I know you want to jump into the fun question, but in the end, right, and Olivia, I want you to nod and shake your head because all I want in my day is for you to agree with me. Yes. In the end, the technology enables really one-to-one -one conversations. Really, it's all about how companies can talk to their employees, how brands can talk to their consumers, how service departments can talk to their unhappy you know, you know, customers and communities. Really, data and technology as a whole, is there really anything that CMOs, right? Because you started with CMO on the cloud, so I want to bring it back to the CMO on the cloud. The CMO is worried. Is it kind of fair to say that really it's about using all this technology to get back to kind of that hand-to-hand -hand, you know, conversations that took place when businesses existed in much smaller bubbles? Yeah, yeah. One, one of the big challenges, and, and marketing is, has become a little bit removed from, even with this, this social media thing, marketing has become a little bit removed from the front of the store, and more so than it should have. Uh, and customer service has kind of become a, uh, uh, let's send people to this place where when they have a problem, and, uh, and it's a cost center, so let's make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and less valuable. So we've gotten away from this kind of uh, uh, physical brick and mortar commerce mentality of the smile at the front door, the entire customer experience from, from you know, start to finish, uh, and that relationship that you have with people. So it's, it's an, an odd thing where we all know that uh, people like doing business with people they know. They like doing business with people they like. We should be humanizing our companies. We should be improving our customer and user experiences. 
and we have all these tools to do it, and somehow we still manage to do it for a little while and then kind of slide back into marketing content push and uh, collecting data and doing market research that becomes dark data because after it's been reported on, nobody does anything with it. So it's, it's amazing it's really, how we can we, we can cut the customer out of all these things. Like yeah. the customer is what keeps our lights on and our paychecks coming. Yet we cut them out of everything. Like oh god, social. We can talk to our customers, and all of a sudden we're like, well now instead of talking to them, we're just gonna blast them so we don't have to do that anymore. And then we get customer data instead of getting the customer data and doing something with it. We're gonna get overwhelmed by data and then hate data. You know, like you're right. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Well, remember remember when this all started, Olivier uh, and Brian? This was social media. It wasn't social media marketing. It, it was actually a platform for people to, to come and converse. Brands were not initially involved. Right. And actually, I don't think I would have. I probably wouldn't have signed up or got on if it was social media marketing, because I'm I was not a marketing guy. I you know the reason I started to figure out marketing is I wanted to connect with the customers, and I couldn't. That's an interesting idea there, and I, it kind of is perfect for question eight. So we we ask a lot about like what's the craziest uh, thing you've ever heard interpreted for like the cloud and I've interviewed lots of people on what cloud meant and uh, actually even at the event yesterday there was a couple people that gave me some really interesting ideas on what the cloud was but when it comes to buzzwords like I mean I I think your your answer to the last question was probably that my favorite takeaway of this was like the customer experience really is the foundation that we're trying to improve and it doesn't matter if it's big data marketing social media CIO all these roles whatever's you know answering the, the creating a better customer experience and that's internal customers as well as external mm -hmm. I like to not forget employee engagement when we talk about that but which buzzword is the buzzword that we eliminate and when I think of it eliminating it's like no longer something we, we even care about anymore because it's just something so innate to what we're doing so we have big data we have cloud and then we have social media so which of those buzzwords do you see as the one that's like you know three years from now no one even calls it that you know so we've you know we've Daniel and I have kind of joked about this there's also the Internet of Things uh, yes. which is a totally valid topic but it's a buzzword becomes a buzzword and an annoying buzzword at that when when two things happen when um, when everybody's talking about it constantly 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 and it, it just becomes annoying to hear it like it's it's like fingernails on a chalkboard because your your brain just disconnects from the conversation and every time that that buzzword comes up it goes ting ting and so there's that and then there's the point where the the meaning of the term has been so bastardized that even bringing it up is just completely vacuous and meaningless and uh, and it's it's lost all sorts of value I don't think that cloud internet of things uh, big data and all these things have reached that point yet and social media hasn't either and social media is is a, is a, a normal term um, but when when you start hearing about constantly conversations it's about engagement man um, it's not that engagement is bad or conversations are bad um, it's just that if it's overused and and used vacuously, it, it just becomes a buzzword uh, in in that particular context or at that moment in time. And then it can kind of maybe come back to being a relevant term if, if we're serious about uh, about using it properly. So I, I don't I'm kill supposed one. to like just come up it. with something just, witty. Just kill one. Just just pick one. Yeah. Um, get rid of one. Just get rid of one. I don't know. Um, oh. Fine. I no no no. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. No 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 no. I'm not. I'm not getting sucked into that one. Oh. Oh man. I saw. So I mean, always, I, always I, outspoken. Yeah. Olivier Blanchard has an opportunity to put the to push the kill button. No, no, this is this is like growing up me now. I'm, I'm he trying lets to them like, live. Is it? Are you a different person that wrote the social media ROI, Dal? I mean, that's the, that's the. Uh, I expected you to kill off. You know, I mean, even a big data from a standpoint of, uh, it's no longer being big, or you could have you know thrown it to. Uh, that's interesting. I, I like that you're um, – because I always think buzzwords are buzzwords because nobody knows exactly what the hell they are. You know, The right. reason I think cloud gets – I mean, we were having a discussion, uh, Mark and I, in the, in the Twitter stream just during the chat when he was asking me what's the difference. We were talking about cloud, digital, and data. And isn't that really all cloud? And I was like, no. I was explaining – You know, I got out my geek side of that. But he had a good point because I think those get lumped together in cloud and then – when we talk data, social data is included in data, and now we're talking social media. I think we buzzwords is because nobody focuses on training or really. I mean, we just throw these random words out there so we can market them and and spam everybody with all the information. Okay, fine. So all right, so I'll say big data right now is is 
my least my the, the, the more annoying of, of the buzzwords because it's it's used constantly by people who have no idea what it actually is, what it means, what the value is, and it's repeated. And and so when when I look at a a tech conference or, or I look at stuff and, and there's I'm following a hashtag and I keep seeing people retweeting big data, big data, big data, I know that eighty percent of them probably have no idea what it is that they're talking about. Uh, so in that context it becomes a little bit of a buzzword and I don't I think it, it does the, the value of big data a little bit of a disservice, um, but at the same time it doesn't grate me and annoy me in the way that uh, other buzzwords used to when the social media gurus were spewing all kinds of BS, which they still do, but to a lesser extent I think now, um, about social, like return on, on influence and, and all the, the, the junk that, that I used to write about a lot more. Well, I appreciate your authenticity. This conversation ah. has, been, has been most engaging. Good one. Um, you know, I, I really do. Your synergy, the your synergy the was synergy was expired, inspiring. Well, I, I'm, I'm inspired, but not only am I inspired, I'm so inspired, Olivia, that I have no intention to measure whether this conversation had any value. <laughs> but I do believe deep down in my heart that we've done good here. And yes. doing good is all that we have to do. And that's how we can be an authentic and engaged. Okay. The, the engagement value like of this Olivier. conversation. Yeah. Real Olivier has emerged. So we appreciate you so much coming on today. Yeah, thanks, uh, we, pre we appreciate our friends at uh, IBM who helped us get a lot of content through their Insights uh, event this week. And, uh, of course, Avnet Cloud Ready. And we will see all of our friends next week. Olivier will run the recap. And we'll make sure we push out that uh, CMO in the Cloud series. Because if you oh, weren't... Uh, Paying attention, it's not just one blog. It was like six. It's a, it's, it's kind of like an ebook. Yeah, um, there's gonna be more too. So maybe it'll turn into that someday. Which is fantastic. So Olivier, Brian, guys, I love it. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Don't get too dressed up there, uh, Daniel. We'll see you at Cloud at Cloud Talk. Uh, what seven? Yep. In six. a week. Cloud Talk six. See you in a and week. Seven. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody on Twitter. Thanks. Bye.